Hello guys, Survival Tech here. Today we're going to be talking about Survival Comms Tactical Comms Go Bag. So our goal for this discussion is to put together a kit full of the essential items we need for tactical communications. For the Go Bag to be a success, we'll need to achieve the following objectives. Uh, VHF, UHF communications. This means voice and data communications over amateur radio. FRS, GMRS, and PMR. So my comms equipment will need to be adaptable to the different frequencies of these services. The kit will need to be adaptable to various comms plans. The kit will need to provide wideband receive, including shortwave listening. Equipment in the kit should be able to last me 36 hours in the field. In addition to voice and data communications, offline mapping should be available to me. The kit should allow me incoming and outgoing messaging over amateur radio. It should also allow me the ability to share my coordinates with others in the radio network. Finally, the kit should allow me to share real-time tactical data, intelligence, and coordinates. For VHF and UHF, I decided to use equipment I already have. So I'm using the Kenwood THD7 for voice and data communications. I also have two spare batteries, but I'm still shy of the 36 hours requirement. The Kenwood gives me VHF, UHF, PMR, FRS, GMRS, and public service. To keep things simple and easy to use, I use a programmable speaker microphone with the Kenwood radio. General coverage receive and my backup radio. Once again, I've decided to use equipment that I already have. In this case, the Yezu VX5R. Using the Yezu gives me an advantage as it's not only a tri-band HT, it also functions as a wideband receiver or light scanner. The Yezu is also a good choice because of its rugged, submersible design. Finally, to meet my requirements, I'll order two additional lithium batteries for the Yezu. Sometimes it may be necessary to provide someone else with a radio who doesn't have one or have the correct one. For this reason, I use the Wuxun KG819 UHF with spare lithium battery. Data, Mapping, and Messaging For the average survivor, prepper, or search and rescue worker, this setup might be overkill. So although we have data coming into the Kinwood, uh, we still use an additional TNC to get data into a heads-up display. There were two ways to achieve this. The first was to connect the output audio from the Kenwood to the mobile phone. The second way was to introduce a wireless Bluetooth TNC uh, to achieve the same result. Either method would allow us to view packets from the radio network on the screen of our mobile phone. However, an additional adapter would have to be fabricated to allow simultaneous use of the TNC and the speaker microphone. The end result is having a HUD heads-up display which displays tactical data from APRS via our Kenwood radio. An additional benefit are the maps, offline maps, which we've created with Google Maps. Depending on the nature of your emergency, if internet access is not available, you will need to have previously prepared uh, the offline Google Maps and stored them in your mobile phone. In an emergency, I would simply use the mapping application within my GPS to solve this mapping problem. So let's talk about the bag for a moment. Uh, I don't remember the manufacturer, but it's called UTG Tactical Messenger Bag. It's mole compatible. It has a huge, uh, large inner pocket, uh, several pockets on the outside, as well as two side pockets. The over-the-shoulder strap and clever padding allows this bag to be uh, worn over body armor, tactical vest, uh, chest rigs. And if you're using an assault pack, it won't interfere with the assault pack when you're wearing it. 
One interesting point of this bag is the large inside pouch. A Yezu FT897 fits perfectly inside there. That might end up being a bit too heavy, so I might just go with the Yezu uh, FT817. Even with the 817 inside, there's still plenty of room for all of my other equipment. Please remember, we're not trying to replace our rucksacks, we're trying to augment them. It makes no sense having multiple rucksacks if you end up on foot anyway. Naturally, there are a few other pieces of kit in the bag that go along with supporting the goals of the bag. These few extra items make the bag a standalone system, allowing it to independently achieve its own goals or to function as a piece of kit within a larger solution. This one requires no introduction. It's the Leatherman Charge. Next is the Lead Linzer V2 95 Lumen Flashlight. Next, a basic watch and a stopwatch. Next, we have a Garmin Fortrex and some extra batteries for it. And we also have some 12 hour chem lamps. I also keep a pencil and paper. And also a windproof lighter. And a large waterproof VHF radio pouch from Aquapack. So, this is the starting point for my Tactical Comms Go Bag. I wouldn't like to tell anybody how to prepare their own bag. But one thing I'd like to make sure you all know is that you need to understand what your own requirements are. It doesn't matter if you have all the fancy bits or, or pieces as, as uh, anyone else's bag, as long as your bag has the things that you need to achieve your comms plan. So the very first thing you need to do is start to understand what is it that you need in an emergency situation. It doesn't need to be end of the world or zombies or any nonsense like that. Um, you can think about it from terms of uh, in terms of Hurricane Katrina or Sandy uh, and what those people went through. Just look it up. Then you'll be able to understand uh, or at least come up with some basis for your own communications plan. Finally, I'd like to tell you that there's lots of uh, channels on YouTube and uh, web pages on the net, forums on the net, uh, which have uh, a lot of confusing information. One thing is for certain, these people are just trying to help. But ultimately, it's your own responsibility to come up with a comms plan that is suitable for you. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video useful or entertaining, uh, please like, share, and spread the word. Rock and roll. Thanks a lot. Ciao.